Hi, uh, welcome you all on physics of then. So in the previous lectures, we have studied about uh, Newton's laws of motion and the uh, circular motion. And we have studied uh, both the concepts and do I think a lot of problems. I think in each topic, two, three, two, three problems we did. So today we are going to start with a new topic and that is that is well known by you all that is friction. So today we are going to study friction. So it will be a mix of Newton's laws of motion uh, with circular motion with some rolling and all these types of conditions. And we will we again will more focus or emphasize on problem solving skills. So uh, let's without any wasting time, let's get started with friction. So uh, let's start it with some basic definitions. So what is static friction? So let's define it. So it acts between surfaces. So let me write it. It acts between surfaces. So those who are preparing for jam and all these types of competitive exams. So these videos are going to be useful for that uh, them. And also those <coughs> who are preparing for other exams or just for their knowledge. So this uh, this is basically an attempt for your uh, uh, so called the numerical solving skills. So I will suggest you to write all these things in a pen and paper. So get your pen and paper and write these types of in your copy. So it acts between surfaces which do not have which do not have relative motion so that is the its definition it acts these types of frictions acts between the surfaces which do not have any type of relative motion it can adjust that is one property of it it can adjust its direction and as well as its magnitude as well as its magnitude so it means that static friction, the value of the static friction and the direction of the static friction is not fixed. It should be derived or it should be calculated, not derived. It should be calculated from the uh, equations that we are dealing with. So that was about it's the basic definition in how it acts. So let us suppose there are two examples. So let's this is a rough surface. And there is one block of let's say mass M and a force F is applied on it. A force F is applied on it and it is still at rest. Then the frictional force uh, will be acting in this direction that is FS. So these F and FS must be equal so that the net force is zero. Let's see one. Uh, let's see very quick one more example. Let's say there is a one block. And there is a one particle of mass M. There is one another particle block of mass M on that block. And they are moving with the same velocity. Let's say it is moving with V of T and the same part of V of T. So the both the particles has the same velocity that is V of T so that the relative motion between these two is zero. So if you apply a force F on it and let's say this surface is your rough surface, then there will be a frictional force on this block on the lower block. So that will be in this direction friction FS and this block have a friction forward FS. Okay, so that is just a definition of the static force that it adjusts its uh, direction as well as magnitude and it is found in those surfaces where there is no relative motion. So that was just a <coughs> basic idea of what the static friction is. Uh, now let's see what are the rolling conditions and uh, how to uh, when a body is rolling what the uh, respective or corresponding velocities will be. So let's see that. So suppose there is a let's write let first write me the topic condition of rolling. So here we will uh, describe another type of motion that is rolling motion. So 
here we will define what is how to uh, what is the general definition of the rolling so at the point of instant contact there is the relative velocity these two points is zero okay so suppose uh, this is in motion under at some at some level okay and let's say this is ground okay so the body has two types of motion first is the translation translation and the second one is rotation so let's see the translation if let's say its velocity is v that is the center of mass velocity is v so let's this is the center of mass its velocity is vc then each point of the particle will have a velocity of vc here also the lowest point will have a translational velocity of vc this point will also have a velocity vc this point will also have a velocity vc so each point let's call the name a b c d and let's this is c prime that is the center of mass so each point has a velocity that is vc now i'm saying an another thing that the body is uh, is in rotation so if it is in rotation motion let's say velocity is omega then this point will have a velocity is omega r at this point the velocity will be in this direction that is omega r at this point it will be omega r at this point it will be omega r so if the body have both the motion translation and motion so these velocities at this point it will be omega r in this direction at this point it will be omega r at this point it will be in this direction omega r at this point it will be this in omega r so the basic definition or the rolling what is rolling rolling is something uh, it is a it is a type of motion so if this ground is a static if this ground is i think let if i say static then this point of contact here the instantaneously this is instantaneous instantaneous point of contact point of contact so rolling condition says that the instantaneously point of contact this should be at rest so there will be no relative motion so if this is at rest then this velocity should be zero because the ground it at zero so this implies that vc should equal to omega r if this conditions happens then ground it at zero velocity velocity of ground is, is equal to zero then this uh, point of contact c will be zero if this conditions happens so put vc is equal to omega r each term at each point then the upper point will have a velocity of 2 vc lower point has a velocity of 0 this will be have a velocity net velocity in this direction that is omega root 2 vc because uh, uh, vc and v r are equal vc and omega r are equal so it will be a vector addition at this direction it will be under root 2 vc so this is a time like in vertical circular motion if there is a pure rolling or it let's say there is a both translational and rotation motion and you have to find the condition of rolling so it is that at the point of contact the relative velocity should be zero suppose that is not a ground you are on a surface that is moving with that let's say velocity v1 then vc minus omega r should be v1 because the relative velocity should be equal so that is a condition of rolling in, in this time okay so i was dealing in this friction so let's move to another topic and you will be find very uh, useful when you solve your uh, rolling problems okay then you have to get the relative velocity is at what point and you have to get it so this will be get is going to be helpful for you that at that time so let's now move to horizontal circular track so i will just briefly state you what happens there and what are the values of normal and <clears throat> how this is acting okay so let's move there so let us consider there is a some type of circular track okay 
and there is a let's say a car or a truck anything that is moving with a constant velocity let's say v so when it is here it is moving with constant velocity c so i will write that v is your constant so let me write the topic here what i'm going to deal with that is horizontal circular track okay so that is our so we are going to just discuss what happens and why we are dealing with it friction so if the velocity is v and let's say this is your some car moving here so the mass this lets this symbol denote the downward direction and this symbol denotes the upward direction of that ground so the mass that is mg the gravitational force is acting downward and upward is the normal so if this is the plane and this is a car moving so mg is downward and n is upward so we are just stating that and this is your track of this is your horizontal circular track okay so what we have there is v is equal to your constant velocity if v is constant then from circular motion concept you know the tangential acceleration is zero so it means tangential force is zero so this applies that in this case in this case no tangential force acts here so this confirms you that friction will not act tangentially so your radial acceleration is equal to v square of r that is not equal to zero and the frictional force which here will be acting that will be in the radial direction that is fr so fr that is radial is not equal to zero so that was all about the horizontal circular track what happens there and basically we all are assuming that this surface is rough only then can this frictional force will act and the very last thing about the static friction which i wish to comment is that static friction let me write it here static friction does not have any formula its value is calculated using concepts of equilibrium or dynamics equilibrium or dynamics and it has a maximum value which is restricted by the normal force so it has a maximum value so the frictional force maximum value is given by mu s that is static friction coefficient and n so fs will always be less than or equal to mu s that is static friction coefficient mu s times n mu mu s times n so that was all about the static friction and in the next lecture we will be dealing about the kinetic friction thank you